الشيخ المفيد رحمه الله he was the first مرجع of us the شيعة he lived in the beginning of غيبة الكبرى so in the غيبة الكبرى the first مرجع was the شيخ المفيد he came a few years after غيبة الصغرى he was a مرجع people would come to him he used to give them fatwa according to his understanding of the hadith it's reported that one day a villager came to a Shaykh al Mufid and he told a Shaykh al Mufid, I have a question, fiqh question, I need your help. What is it? He met with a Shaykh al Mufid privately. Nobody knew about this, only Shaykh al Mufid and the villager. He told him, We have in our village a woman died and she's pregnant. There is a child in her stomach. The child is still not probably formed well, maybe four or five months, something like that. So here, what do we do? Do we bury the, the child? Do we just leave the child and bury the mother? Or no, we cut open the stomach and we take out the child. If it's dead, we bury it alive. But if it's alive, probably won't be able to live four or five months. So what do we do? He asked the Shaykh al-Mufid. Hey, Shaykh al-Mufid, he did his ishtihad. He told him, according to my understanding of the ahadith, you have to bury the woman alive. Don't touch it because... you. You need permission from Allah, from the Imams, to cut the stomach of a woman. Because the hadith of Ahlul Bayt say, When a human being dies, he still has honor and sanctity. You cannot go and, and, and basically chop him up and, 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 and cut him and everything. And that's why some of our ulama, they say it is haram to do autopsy unless it is necessary. Unless it's very necessary. Or else who's giving you authority to cut this mayat up into pieces and to cut his stomach and his body? He is still there. His soul is still there. And he may be what? He may be hurt maybe, for example, not physically, but psychologically he'll be hurt by this. So we need permission to what? To, chuck, to check, uh, touch any human being. So a Shaykh al-Mufid, according to his ishtihad, he tells the villager, it is haram. To what? To cut the stomach? Just bury her like that. The villager leaves. He thanks the Shaykh al-Mufid. While he's going back to his village, a horseman comes, he chases the villager. He tells him, wait, I am the messenger of a Shaykh al-Mufid. A Shaykh al-Mufid says, I made a mistake. No, cut the stomach open, take the child out and bury her. Okay, thank you. So this villager, he did what the horseman told him. And then the villager, he sent a, a letter to Shaykh al-Mufid thanking him for correcting his mistake. Shaykh al-Mufid gets the letter. He says, what is this guy talking about? I sent no horseman. My ishtihad is still the first opinion. I didn't change my mind. What happened? And then a Shaykh al-Mufid realized that only he and the villager knew about the story. So who is that horseman? This is when a Shaykh al-Mufid realized it couldn't be but Imam al-Mahdi because there is no human being that knew about the story. So it was either Imam al-Mahdi that told that villager or it was one of the companions of Imam al-Mahdi. Remember we said Imam al-Sadiq says, وَمَا بِثَلَاثِينَ مِنْ وَحْشَةِ Imam al-Mahdi has 30 companions. The point is it was the work of Imam al-Mahdi. You see how Imam al-Mahdi corrected, corrected the mistake of a Shaykh al-Mufid? You see how he guides our ulama in mysterious ways even the ulama are not aware of. Shaykh al-Mufid may be sleeping. Imam al-Mahdi is taking care of these things. When we say we are Shia of Imam Mahdi, Imam Mahdi hasn't abandoned us. He's there for us. Now what happened? Shaykh al-Mufid, he felt really bad that he made a mistake and Imam Mahdi had to correct the mistake. So he said, I will no longer give fatwa. خلص. No one come to me, no one ask me because I will make a mistake again. They say Imam al-Mahdi sent him a letter. There's reports that Imam al-Mahdi sent him a letter. What did he tell him in the letter? Afid ya Mufid. Min alayka al-fatwa wa minna tasdeed. How beautiful. Imam al-Mahdi, by the way, Shaykh al-Mufid, his name is Muhammad. Imam al-Mahdi, he gave him the title of al-Mufid. Al-Mufid is what? The one that benefits, the beneficial one, because of how be the Shia benefited from him. He told him, Afid ya Mufid, continue giving, give, give the fatwa. You give the fatwa, wa minna tasdeed. And we will take care of the mistakes. If you make any mistakes, we will fix them. You see how beautifully the Imam al-Mahdi, Ajjal Allah Ta'ala, Faraj wa Sharif, how he guides our ulama. You think Imam al-Mahdi doesn't help us? He helps us, but we're not aware of it. Just like Musa wasn't aware of al-Khidr. Just like the people of the time of Khidr were not aware of his good actions. Imam al-Mahdi does help us. And that's why in the letter that Imam al-Mahdi sent to a shaykh al-Mufid, beautiful letter. I urge all of you to read it. What does he tell him? He tells him, Ya shaykh al-Mufid, tell my Shia, that I have not forgotten them. He tells him, 
وإنا غير مهملين لمراعاتكم ولا ناسين لذكركم ولولا ذلك لنزل بكم اللأواء واصطلمكم الأعداء Imam al-Mahdi tells Shaykh al-Mufid, tell the Shia, don't think that I don't know about you. Don't think that I have abandoned you. No, I know everything. And if it was not for my efforts and my help, wallahi, you Shia would have been destroyed from many years ago. Look, the Shia of Ahl al-Bayt for over a thousand years, everyone is our enemies. Every government is our enemies. The Abbasid, they kill Shia. The Uthmanis, they kill Shia. Every government right now, look, Saudi, all these countries, kill Shia, kill Shia. Daesh, kill Shia. Our books were destroyed. Our maraja' were killed. How is it that today you have three to five hundred million Shia around the world? How? Everyone is our enemy. The West is our enemy. You guys are Iran. We're not your friends. The Sunni world is our enemy. Israel is our enemy. Who's our friend? Yet, we're, al we're as alive as ever. Three to five hundred million Shia all across the world? Don't you think Imam al-Mahdi has a hand in this? Iran Shia, Iraq Shia, Bahrain Shia, the Eastern Promise in Saudi Shia, Pakistan there's Shia, India there's Shia, go to Lebanon Shia, Syria Shia, in Canada Shia, America Shia. How did the Shia spread when there's so much enemies against us and we're the minority? You don't think Imam al-Mahdi has a hand in this? Imam al-Mahdi says if it wasn't for my dua and my efforts, we don't know what he does exactly, but if it wasn't for his efforts, he says, لَنَزَلَ بِكُمُ الْأَعْدَى وَاسْطَلَمَكُمُ الْأَعْدَى You would have been what? perished many years ago. And that's why Imam al-Mahdi is there for us. Just because I can't see him, doesn't mean Imam al-Mahdi is not there to help me.